What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon11970, thanking you, as always, for checking out my video. And it is time we start doing rational discussion about a topic that we, from the media, have been pushed into thinking is taboo, and they shun it, and people get very angry about it. And when it comes to learning truth, we cannot speak like five-year-old people or angry children. We have to discuss things. Now, in order to find truth, there has to be investigation. That's the whole reason for our court systems, for example, is it's not based on emotion. You can't go to court. If you're on trial, the last thing you want is a jury to say, well, I don't believe in that person or I don't like that person. So I don't want to hear any evidence. I've already made up my mind that person's guilty. Is that what you would want in this world? And yet, we see when it comes to 9-11, when it comes to those attacks, people like myself and others that are researching these things are trying to tell people it's not what you've been told. And the response from a person who doesn't believe in it is not to investigate, it's not to listen, it's to automatically put up a defensive stance, that's what you're programmed to think, and then not communicate. Because, and, and I got this the other day from somebody on a post that I put on my Facebook page. And they said, you know, it's true that there are a lot of things to question about September 11th, but we've been basically programmed in this, in this country that it's taboo to speak against it and to ask questions. And think about that. How does that make sense anywhere else in the world? Or any other situation in this country where they say, oh, it's un-American to talk about 9-11, if you don't believe in the official story. And they say, oh, it's unpatriotic and un-American un to speak about it or ask questions. Well, that's what, isn't that what America's all about? At least I thought it was. I mean, where else do you see that anywhere else in the society where asking questions is a bad thing or pushed aside or you get ridiculed or attacked for it? I mean, if you're in a trial, do they not ask questions? Do they not try and find as much evidence as they can to draw a truthful conclusion out of the evidence? Or do they base it on emotion? What about school? Are children punished for asking questions? Or is that encouraged because asking questions gets you to find answers? It stimulates the brain. What about you when you go to the doctor? Just imagine if they were about to do a procedure on you that you didn't feel comfortable with and you were yelled at because you asked a question because they supposedly know better. So if you think of it from a logical standpoint, it's time to open up the, the floodgates and actually talk about this without name calling. So here's the thing I'm going to say. If you disagree with what I'm going to say, that's perfectly fine. What I'm going to do is give evidence I'm going to give information you can check on your own. I'm not basing it on my opinion. But if all you can do is, instead of trying to check into those things, if all you're going to do is say, oh, you're an idiot, or oh, you're this, or oh, you're that, you're not going to be welcome in this discussion. End of story. It's my channel. Too bad if you don't like it. So I don't have a problem with people disagreeing. But disagree by showing us your version of the story. And don't base it on what you've been told. Because then you're a follower who is easily led. And if you notice anything about what the media is, it's not an investigative reporting system that looks at all facts and draws its own conclusions and then comes up with what it thinks it can have, which means it could be subject to change with new information. Anytime you ever talk to any outlet in the media and you say the word 9-11, their response is emotional. They don't want to hear what you have to say. They automatically shut you off, disconnect you. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to acknowledge it. They'll, they'll start with the attacks. They'll say, oh, you're not an American. Oh, you're not a patriot. And they'll get defensive. That's just like if you catch a cheating spouse and they're caught red-handed. They're not going to sit there and say, oh, you're right, you caught me. They're going to get defensive. They're going to try and talk about something else or they're going to try and distract you. You have to look at the psychology behind things. If a person or persons or politicians or media, if they have nothing to hide and their evidence is solid, then this evidence should speak for itself. 
but yet they want to distract you by saying, oh, you're talking about 9-11? Let's disconnect that call. Or, oh, let's all make fun of them so this way we don't actually address their concerns. We'll attack their emotions. How does that help us grow and to learn? And the more they hide it, the more they use that tactic, the more it shows to me that the things that I talk about seem to be true or truer or more likely to be true. Because I wasn't there. I didn't plan the event from either the government standpoint or the terrorist standpoint, depending on who you want to believe happened. So I can't say either way if I know 100% for a fact. But let's present some of the evidence. If you research anything from scientists that study gravity, ooh, cut myself, they talk about how you have the Twin Towers, okay? They have different levels. That's each floor. Each floor has steel and concrete holding it together, strong enough to withstand hurricane winds. And yet you see a plane, here's the Twin Tower, you see the plane hit one angle of near the top of the tower, and yet it free falls on itself going the speed of gravity, which basically would go against the fact that with different layers, it would have to go like this, stack down and down and down, because the bottom layers were not impacted by the explosion, just the top was. So when the top would collapse, if it was the free fall, first of all, when you cut a tree, you're cutting it from one side. What does the tree do? It falls where the cut is being made. It doesn't collapse in on itself. So if a plane hit the building from one side, wouldn't it lean or potentially lean in the direction that the hole was created if it was going to fall at all? And yet both, plan both buildings and we're not even going to get into Building 7 yet, free-falled at the speed of gravity. In other words, it's like if you took a bowling ball and dropped it off the Twin Tower, it was falling at the same speed the, the buildings did. And that's physically impossible because you have resistance on each level. So it would have to collapse in on itself and crush all the way down. But yet you see, like a demolition explosion, it collapses in on itself. Let's not even talk about the fact that they've already said that fuel does not melt steel. And I'll give you a prime example. How many of you know that in the 1940s, a military plane, I know it wasn't a B-52, I don't have the exact um, plane, but it was a military large size plane that crashed into the Empire State Building, causing a huge gap and a hole in the Empire State Building. Burning, set on fire. There are pictures that you could see this on. They've talked. I actually have a video in the beginning of this channel. The first couple of weeks I started this channel, I have a video about it. And yet the building still stood. So let's just get into that part right there. Just the physics behind it. Plane hits one side. It doesn't lean towards that side where the hole is. And it collapses free fall even though there are stacks of concrete and steel underneath it, and it fell at the speed of gravity, which would suggest there was either nothing underneath, which means there was no reinforcement, it was just hollow, or they put charges all the way down, so it was a planned explosion, so instead of leaning and having the city topple like a bunch of dominoes, creating more damage, it free fell. And it did it with the second building, and it also did it with Building 7, which is the one people just don't want to talk about. Like, it, for some reason, it's not a factor. No plane hit Building 7. And again, the building did not topple over because people are saying, oh, there were explosions. Well, where would the explosions come from if it wasn't from the plane? Because the plane was all the way, way above Building 7. And a few pieces that fell would not make a building free fall in on itself unless there were explosives. You have to think about this logically. And if there were explosions in that building, then that means their official story of planes, two planes took down three buildings, took me a second to have the right fingers, is just physically impossible. But let's continue. Let's go into the Pentagon. 
Remember, supposedly a plane hit the Pentagon? Now, here's the thing about the Pentagon. The Pentagon is 77 feet tall and a few inches. You have a 757 airplane with the wingspan of 124 feet, 10 inches. So just imagine this is that building. And this is the plane. Okay, you're saying it came in at around 530 miles an hour and it would have to hit at low ground. So that means that plane had to come in, go a skimming over the city to crash into the middle of this building. You know how low it would have to fly? Are you telling me in this day and age where every phone has a camera that not one person would be able to videotape and record in a highly governmental area where there's going to be plenty of video cameras. You're telling me nobody has one footage of that plane? You have to think about it. It didn't drop from the sky. It would have to come in so it can hit because this is a relatively not a very tall building. So to be able to hit it coming in at that speed, it would have to be coming in low for a long distance because planes travel very fast. And if you want to hit a target, which is not going to be that easy in a very crowded rural area, it would have to come in low. Are you telling me nobody saw that? The plane hit the outer wall, which caused approximately a 16-foot hole. The plane was 124 feet long, and it only created a 16-foot hole? So are you saying that the plane hit and demolished and disintegrated on impact? Well, we know that's not true because we see a plane hitting the Twin Tower and it went right through, wings and all. So you can't say, oh, well, maybe the wings fell off. Because when you see the planes, as they filmed it going into the Twin Towers, the plane, a whole plane, including the wings, went right through like it was butter. And, and you saw the hole that it created in the Twin Towers. But yet in the Pentagon, it had a 16-foot hole. There were, and I wrote a bunch of stuff down, okay? There are three rings in the Pentagon, three rings to bind them, go figure. And each layer has steel-reinforced concrete. And supposedly this plane that only created a 16-foot gap went through all three layers of solid concrete and steel. And yet, no plane parts anywhere, no bodies anywhere, no luggage anywhere, because they show images and they have pictures of this where they had the fire department trying to put out the fire and there is not one bit of wreckage. So did it just disintegrate? Because an explosion that bad that would disintegrate a plane would cause a lot more of a hole than a 16 foot gap and it would create a lot more damage. But no one wants to stop and think about this. And you're telling me there were over 85 different TV camera recordings that were confiscated by the FBI. And not one has been released even a decade later. So there is not one bit of evidence that shows a plane hitting the building. So let's think of it logically. You can't say, well, they don't want to show the footage because it might be graphic. Well, didn't they show the two planes hitting into the Twin Towers? I guarantee you, if you go on YouTube right now, you could see those very same images. How many images did they have of people falling to their death, jumping out of windows? They sure filmed that, no problem. So you have to pull out the logic of, well, they don't want to show that plane because of whatever graphics. You know, it might be too graphic. That's not logical. So the only other conclusion is, there was no plane, and if you hide the evidence that there was no plane in the video tapings, well, then they can make whatever story they want. There has to be a reason why they are not showing it, especially over a decade later. That happened in 2001. And here's a little bit of information that I, th I find just coincidental. But um, the day that the ground was broken for the construction of the Pentagon was September 11th, 1941. So on the 60th anniversary, to the very day, that plane supposedly hit the Pentagon. 
yet you will never find any video footage. They are confis they confiscated all of the video evidence that would disprove that a plane hit, and you're not allowed to see it. And yet people will get angry at people like myself and others for just promoting logic. Everything that I talk about here, it's not based on emotion. It's based on evidence and facts. And if your only rebuttal to it is, oh, you're an idiot, or, oh, you're not American, you're not answering the question. And how is that beneficial? Because it's showing, like if you look up Operation Northwoods, Operation Northwoods was a plan that they had that they didn't follow through because JFK didn't sign it. But in 1961 or 1962, it was one of the two, they were going to try and start a conflict with Cuba. And the way they were going to do it is, is they were going to attack U.S. bases. They were going to take planes that were drones, because they had even drones, they even talk about it in the unclassified evidence, that they had drone capabilities in the 1960s, and they were going to pla paint planes to look like commercial airlines and blame it on Russian MiGs or the Cubans so they can get the American people on their side to go start a conflict with Cuba. And it went as high as the Secretary of Defense. But JFK did not allow this to happen. Probably one of the reasons why he was murdered, among other things, like Executive Order 11110, but you could check that for yourself. So if you don't think a country can sacrifice a, a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand people to, to make trillions and billions of dollars, billions and trillions of dollars for an agenda, you don't think they're capable of doing that? Well, then you're telling me that politicians are nothing but honest. And you don't think they don't have ties with crime? Look at how many times we've seen, like the MF Global debacle, what happened with Operation um, Fast and Furious, where they got caught selling guns, our own guns, to Mexican drug cartels with the purpose of them killing American people so we can have more restrictive gun laws. How much evidence do you need? And I'm not going to sit here and say, now you have to believe my side. All I'm saying is, why is it so wrong to question things? Why is it that we have to just believe what we're told when we've been lied to over and over again through this very same governments throughout the world? And if you cannot get to the point at this, this point in, in the fact that it's 2014, and you can't sit there and say, you know what, I can research, I want to verify things, I don't want to just dismiss it. I mean, do you really think I want to believe that my government is capable of doing things like that? You think that makes me proud? But facts are facts, and whether you believe them or not does not change these facts that I've presented. If somebody out there has video proof and video evidence of a plane hitting the Pentagon, show me and I will admit that I was wrong. But none of you can do that because it doesn't exist. And if you think, like I've always said, think from an enemy standpoint. If you don't, if a plane did not hit the Pentagon, and there are cameras all over the place because this is the Pentagon. If you don't think they have cameras all over the place, then you're just an idiot. And if they confiscate all of those, the video evidence that shows there's no plane, well, that would keep your story, wouldn't it? You wouldn't want that out. And you'd do everything that you could to make sure that people don't talk about it. And what, what can you do? You can't say, well, we're, we're not showing the video evidence because we don't want to offend people. Because they have planes hitting both Twin Towers and they show it multiple times, no problem. And they show people falling out of the building to their death. They had no problem showing that. So they can't use that. The only other conclusion is there is no plane on those recordings. And if they keep them and prevent you from seeing it, they're protecting themselves. Please, somebody else, tell me a logical explanation of why 13 years later they can't show one angle that proves the plane because wouldn't that shut people like me up? If they showed one camera angle where they show a plane coming in, hitting the way they said it did, and how it just disintegrated and proves, oh, that's why a 124-foot wide plane created a 16-foot hole and then disintegrated. Oh, well, there's the video evidence. I guess I was wrong. And if you had, let's say you're the government and a plane did hit, and you did have the evidence, and you're getting attacked nonstop, wouldn't you want to show it to shut people up? So 
I've always said, and like I said in my other video, it's asking the question, why? Why are they not showing it? Why are they withholding information? And there is always a reason. And if people can't answer that with anything other than, oh, you're stupid, oh, you're unpatriotic, it's unpatriotic to do nothing. It's unpatriotic to let a tyrannical government or potential tyrannical government murder its own citizens for its own profits. And if you don't think people can do that, you've never studied history. And you don't know about any dictators in just in the last hundred years that have murdered millions of their own people. Are we so good that we're immune to that? Are you saying all of our politicians in this country, they're nothing but pure? Look what they're doing. They're allowing Israel, for example, to bomb and murder children in Gaza. And the media won't talk about it. They're taking over all these lands that aren't ours. Why is it? Our own people, when we got this founding of this country, we said no foreign entanglements. And yet we're doing quite the opposite. So you want to talk about being unpatriotic. What about what our forefathers set in the original Constitution? And the Declaration of Independence. And how they said about how we don't want foreign banks to take over our monetary system because it will corrupt us from within. And they talk about no foreign entanglement so we don't get involved in other countries' business. So you want to talk about not being a patriot. You're going against what your forefathers who fought and died to create this country are, stood for. So you want to call somebody like me unpatriotic because I'm showing evidence that goes against what you've been told? If you can't see it, you're an idiot. And I'm not sitting here saying I know what's happening. But until somebody can show me why a 124-foot plane disappeared, there is no physical evidence that shows it even existed, how the plane made a 16-foot hole, and how Twin Towers can come down at the speed of gravity, even though there are levels of concrete and steel all the way down, and how they didn't topple over, and explain why the Empire State Building didn't fall over or topple down when a plane filled with fuel because it just left the military base, hit straight into it, dead center, causing a humongous gap. I bet you don't even know, you never heard of that until now. If you don't get it at this point that you can't even talk like a rational person, then I question your patriotism. Because to let evil continue means that good people are doing nothing. And I will be damned if I allow that. So if all you have is hate towards me, and all you could do is make fun of it, or you could say, oh, I can't believe you're bringing this up, then you are a traitor to your country. You are not patriotic. You are scared. And instead of dealing with the facts and the evidence, you'll just do what the media does and what the government does. Do an emotional distraction. But you know what? We're waking up to that. We're smarter than that. And if you don't like it, well, guess what? There's a button that says subscribe. If you're not, if you've already hit that button and you don't like what I say, hit it again so you're unsubscribed. I don't want you on my channel. I don't want mindless drones who obey everything they're programmed to believe on my channel. Hey, people who hate, you no, know, despite the fact that I show evidence and I question things, because you didn't hear me once say this is exactly what happened. I'm just presenting evidence. Prove me wrong. Peace.